It's hard to believe, but it has been nearly two decades since we last conducted a long-term test of a Honda Civic. In 1997 Civic HX Coupe was the most recent example of Honda's venerable compact to go through our 40,000 mile test regimen. Now, almost 19 years and four Civic generations later, we're finally welcoming another one into the fold, a 2016 sedan in top off the line touring trim. Why is this 10th generation Civic important enough to warrant an extended closer look? First, because it's a shot at redemption for Honda. The 9th gen Civic drew critical ire, mostly for its plain styling and lack of driving verve. Early indications, including a strong second place finish in a recent five car comparison test, are promising. The new Civic certainly can't be called plain, no matter the body style, the coupe, hatchback, and sedan versions all display curves and angles that are daring for a Civic. And the new Civic is a big deal for Honda in a broader sense, because this car's platform was engineered right here in the USA by Honda's Marysville, Ohio, team and will form the basis for all global versions of the Civic. It also will underpin the next Accord midsize sedan and CRV crossover. Loaded to the gills, to sample the full palette of what the new Civic has to offer, we opted for the sedan's top touring trim level. That means getting a standard the new 174 horsepower 1.5 litre turbocharged four-cylinder, the first four-seed induction engine installed in a US Honda product since the original 2007 Acura RDX. A continuously variable automatic is the only transmission choice for 2016 Turbo Civics, yes? A six-speed manual is coming for certain boosted 2017 models, but we figure most stick shift enthusiasts will wait for the upcoming Civic C. Plus, Honda has had plenty of time to get CVTs right, even our 97 Civic HX long term had one as a nod to its high fuel economy mission. That's about where the similarities between 1997 and 2016 end, technology-wise. Our Civic Touring is positively chock full of the latest equipment, including a 7.0-inch central touchscreen with Apple CarPlay Android Auto capability, dual zone automatic climate control, push-button start, and a digital gauge cluster with customizable information displays. Honda's full package of active safety features is standard on the Touring, comprising adaptive cruise control, land keeping assist, forward collision warning the proprietary lane watch camera which displays a view of the passenger side blind spot on the main screen when the right turn signal is engaged, and a few other systems to help avoid accidents. Shelling out for the Touring model also affords a few features not available on any other Civic trim level, notably LED headlights, rain sensing wipers, heated rear seats, a power passenger seat, a 450 watt premium audio system and slightly thicker front and rear anti-roll bars. All told, our Civic Touring's $27,335 price might seem steep for a compact Honda. But we will say that our long-term BMW 740i, costing more than three times as much, at $96,095, is missing some of the Civic's key features such as adaptive cruise, Apple CarPlay Android Auto, and remote start. So far, so good, after a month of road tripping and commuting, we find that comments in the Civic slogbook are mostly positive. The powertrain has proved especially impressive, averaging a stellar 39 miles per gallon, a figure made all the more remarkable when you consider our car clock to 0 to 60 mph time of 6.9 seconds. The sharp steering and composed ride quality also are strong points. Several complaints have arisen concerning the central touch screen, which is frustrating to use, as is its slider to adjust audio volume, along with the herky-jerky nature of the adaptive cruise control. The latter system's bad behavior spurred some drivers into deactivating the adaptive function in favor of good old regular cruise, a handy feature not always included with these systems. It's achieved by holding down the button that adjusts the following distance. So, yes. Maybe some of the Civic's advanced tech features spur more frustration than actual advancement, but we'll see how our opinions evolve as we live with the car.
We're also curious to find out how the Honda's impressive fuel economy holds up as weather conditions change and the lead foots around here get more time behind the wheel. But considering our initial impression of all around goodness, at this point we'll simply say that, after nearly 20 years, it's nice to have a Honda Civic back in our long-term stable.